You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny, just this once, you're correct. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? No, I'm gay. So who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? That's a very good question, but I hope I don't go to hell. <laughs> I just, I have had so many blessings in my life to feel like he doesn't, that he or she doesn't hate me. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners? No, can you tell me? Before we look at the exchange I had with this likeable young man, let me address the concerns of the San Francisco gay community. You said that we think you're sinful, but we're all sinful, every one of us. So we're not looking down on you, we simply want to tell you how to find everlasting life. Now watch as this young man hears the true gospel for the first time. Do you think there's an afterlife? No. Now, why are you so adamant? You didn't say, oh, I don't know, you said no. Why would you say no? Because I've thought about it before. <laughs> didn't come up with anything? Um, I just... I was raised to believe that once you die, you go to heaven or hell. And what happened? What changed things? Well, is that considered an afterlife, you think? Yeah. Oh, then I guess I believe in an afterlife. I don't know. I just thought that an afterlife was like reincarnation and stuff like that. No, reincarnation doesn't work. You ask anybody who believes in reincarnation, what were you before you got here? And they don't know. What are you going to be afterwards? Don't know. Who gives out the bodies and what do you have to do to get a good body, like a prince or a cockroach? They have no idea. It's just like, you know, haven't thought about it much. So who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? That's a very good question, but I hope I don't go to hell. <laughs> So what do you have to do to go to hell? Um, just, I guess, um, not live life in a good way. I don't know. I don't, I, I, that I haven't thought about too much, really. So you've had a biblical background. Do you know a little bit about the Bible? Not really, but my parents, my parents are kind of religious. So do you know what the Bible says death is, the definition of death in the Bible? No, I don't. Can you? Yeah. Wages. The wages of sin is death. Have you ever heard that verse? No. It's a very famous Bible verse. Yeah. The, it's Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So, do you think you've earned death from God? He's going to pay you in death? That's your wages? Like a criminal in the court of law, the judge says, you murdered three young girls after you raped them. You've earned the death sentence. That's your wages. That's what we're going to pay you. Do you think you're bad enough for God to give you the death sentence? No, I'm a really good person. You're a really good person? Well, can I put that to the test, okay? Okay. Can you be honest with me, Norman? I've always been honest, yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, says, everyone lies every day. So what do you call someone who lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. <laughs> you still think you're a good person? Yeah. You know, good is relative. When I was in school, I was 16, I was a good runner. I came in first for the 440, under, under a minute. It was pretty fast. Broke the tape, all the girls cheered, it made me feel good until I went to inter-school sports. And I lined up with these other guys, and they had, I could hardly see their heads, they were so tall. When the gun went off, I was left in the dust. I was good, but it was a relative good, only when I was in my school, but when I was you know, lined up against fast runners. I wasn't good. And what I'm doing is lining you up with the Ten Commandments to see if you're going to be left in the dust on Judgment Day. So have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? Yes. What do you call someone who steals things? A stealer? A thief. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so what are you? A thief. Well, I used to be. I'm a changed person. <laughs> yeah, I'll try that in a court of law. Rob the bank, but up was a long time ago. We just say you're going to jail, so time doesn't forgive crime or sin. So, you've just told me you're a lying thief. Do you still think you're a good person? I'm a great person. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I have. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? I mean, I say does that count? No. <laughs> But would you ever take your mother's name and use it in the place of a four-letter filth word to express disgust? No. 
never do that with your mother. That's, that's disrespectful and dishonoring her. But you've taken the holy name of God, the one who gave you life, and used it in the place of a filter word to express disgust. It's called blasphemy, punishable by death in the Old Testament. Do you still think you're a good person? I'm a great person because I don't really believe in God. <laughs> Fourth. <laughs> you're trying to make me such a bad person. No, I'm, I'm, giving you a, I'm giving you a standard to judge yourself by because we all think we're good people. I guarantee if Adolf Hitler was here now and I was interviewing him, interviewing him and I said, are you a good person? He'd say, yes, I cleaned up Germany, brought in full employment, got rid of brothels. I gave hope back to Germany, got rid of the scum of the earth, purified the German race. I'm a good person. Guarantee it. The Bible says every man will proclaim his own goodness. Okay, one to go. And I appreciate your honesty, Norman. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? No, I'm gay. Have you ever looked with lust? Looked with lust? Everyone does. So you... I'm not judging you, but Norman, you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day whether you believe in Him or not. Now, I'm just going to give you evidence that God exists, so you know I'm not just saying this because i just being horrible. I care about you. I love you. I, I don't want you to end up in hell. You just met me. <laughs> well, you can meet someone who's in danger of getting into a car, a complete stranger, and you can see the brakes are broken, and you love them enough to say, hey, don't get in that car. That's love. So... This is how you know God exists. When you look at a building, what evidence is there there was a builder? Well, the building's there. Yeah, it couldn't build itself. And when you look at a painting, you know a painter existed because the painting's there. Even if a painting was done 300 years ago and the painter died 250 years ago, you know there was a painter because paintings don't paint themselves. And when we look at creation, it's absolutely scientific and scientifically impossible for creation to create itself. Creation gives us evidence of the genius of God's creative hand. And what's more, we know God requires moral accountability. We've got a conscience. The word conscience means with knowledge. Con is with, science is knowledge. So God's given light to every man. We know, we know of his existence and we know he demands morality. So here's the big question. Norman, if God was to judge you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, would you be innocent or guilty? Well, it would be helpful if I were to know the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Shall not steal, shall not lie, shall not commit adultery, shall not take the name of God in vain. God should be first. It's written on your heart via your conscience. The Bible calls it the work of the law. So if he judged you by those commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? We've been through four of them. Guilty as charged. Heaven or hell? Still heaven. <laughs> Why would you go to heaven when the Bible says all liars love their part in the lake of fire? No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no homosexual can inherit God's kingdom. So what can you do? You're up the river Niagara without a pedal. How can you be made right with God? Do you have any idea how you can find everlasting life? No, but I just, I don't believe, well, I, 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 I misworded it. When I said I don't believe in God, I don't believe in the God that's in the Bible. I believe in a higher power. And um, I just, I have had so many blessings in my life to feel like he doesn't, that he or she doesn't hate me for the, thing, the sins that I've committed. I, I, I was about to do air quotes, but I have done some sins, unfortunately. Do you know what you've just done? What's that? You've done what I did. You've just broke the first of the Ten Commandments. Do you know what it is? No. It's, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. In other words, don't make up a false god, a god in your own image, kind of a snuggly, cuddly god you feel warm and comfortable about. I did it before I was a Christian. I had a God of my imagination. I'd made an image of God in my mind and then cuddled up to him because he had no sense of justice or righteousness or truth. But the God of the Bible is just and holy. He's written his law upon your heart and he says, I'll by no means clear the guilty. But Norman, the Bible says he's rich in mercy and he provided a way for you to be forgiven all your sins and granted everlasting life in an instant. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners? No, can you tell me? Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. Now you probably know that, but you may not know this. The Ten Commandments, which we've been through, are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said just before he died, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court and someone pays your fine, the judge can let you go even though you're guilty. He can say, Norman, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid him. You're free to go. 
Even though you're guilty, he can let you go because someone else paid the fine, and he can do that which is legal and right and just. And God can legally dismiss your case. He can take the death sentence off you in an instant because the fine was paid in full by Jesus on the cross through his death and resurrection. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is so simple a child can understand it, is you repent of all sin. You can't say, I'm a Christian, and you lie and steal and fornicate and blaspheme and continue in a homosexual lifestyle. Everything the Bible says you've got to turn from. And then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Now, if you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? What would be your motive? So you can live. <laughs> yeah, and fear would be your motive. You don't want to hit the ground at 120 miles an hour in your face. So you fear that happening, so you put the parachute on. So in that sense, fear is your friend, not your enemy. And what I've tried to do is put the fear of God on you. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hoping that you'll see fear as your friend, not your enemy. So man, I'm in big trouble on judgment day. If death seizes upon me, I'm gonna end up in hell. I, I don't want that to happen. And so you repent and ask God to give you a new, a new heart with new desires. You know, God will give you a personal miracle if you mean business with him, if you truly do what he says. He'll make you a brand new person on the inside so you love that which is right, not, not that which is wrong. It's a personal miracle. When a sinner loves righteousness rather than sin, when, it wants, when he wants to please God, rather than himself, that's a miracle. And at the same time, not only will he give you a new heart, but he'll give you new desires so you love what God loves and you want to please him above everything. You've been so gracious, you've been so kind and listening to me and patient, and I appreciate that. Are you going to think about what we talked about today? I'll think about it, yeah, before I go to bed tonight. Okay. Ever laid your head on your pillow and heard your heart beat in your ear? That little thump, 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 thump. Never had that happen? Not really. I hope you've got a heart. <laughs> I have a heart, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want you to think like this. If you died tonight, where would you go? This is the biggest question you'll ever ask. And think of the words of Jesus. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? I'm going to give you a little booklet called Save Yourself Some Pain. It's Principles of Christian Growth. And again, thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for your words. Yes, very cool. Oh, look at this. Yes. We ordered them in May, and because of COVID, they just arrived. This is 50,000, and I think they're going to sell really quick. Some guys saw it and wanted to order 100,000. And we had to say to them, I'm sorry, uh, we've got to share them out. We've ordered another 100,000 plus a million to give away. Look at this, the vault. <laughs> Look how real that looks. Oh, this is just awesome. Praise God. These are going to get into millions of homes over time. Yes. God use them to save many souls. Amen. The Vault and the Million Dollar Gospel of John are available at livingwaters.com.